Thank you for joining me. I'm Randy May. We're going to get into the Word of God today. Uh, your, uh, the title of it I'm going to use is You're Down But You're Not Out. Here, please subscribe to the channel. Click like. Hit the bell notice if you wouldn't mind. If you want to make a comment, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. In life, you're going to face some knocks. You're going to take some hits. Things are going to happen. Now, if you've ever played sports, uh, Paul mentions a lot in the Bible, and like right here, we'll get into it in just a minute, but in sports, you see people wearing helmets and pads when they're playing football. Some of them get hurt sometimes. They have to carry them off the field. And in baseball, sometimes the ball will hit the batter or the batter hit a line drive and hit the pitcher and this and that. You're going to take some hits in life. You can't go through life not facing problems. You will have to face problems your entire life. If you can't handle facing problems, then you're going to be a very miserable person who is either uh, so miserable they can't go out of the house or so miserable that they never smile and are never happy about anything. In life, you're going to take some hits. I mean, I got news for you. If you live very long, you're going to lose your parents. They're going to pass away someday. You're going to lose your aunts and uncles, your grandparents, maybe a spouse when you get down the road. You never know. But you have to face grief. You don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Nobody does. But it's part of life. Part of life is facing problems. And I was taught a long time ago by uh, my nephew who was 12 years older than me. He was like my big brother. He's my brother's son. And he told me, when, when you have a problem, take it face on. If you know somebody's unhappy, don't hide from them. Be waiting for them at the door. When they open that door, stick your hand out and say, hey, I heard you got a problem. I want to take care of it. Come in my office. What do we need to do? So you face the problem. Don't run from it. Uh, these things that God gives us in the Word are uh, hard-pressed, but we're not suffocated. We're puzzled, but we're not baffled. All right, You can go to the Word of God and, and find verses on grieving if that's what you're going through. You can find verses that will lift you up if you're depressed. You can find verses if you're a young person and you're dating and somebody breaks up with you, that's just part of life. The average young person, from the time they turn a teenager till they get married, usually has somewhere around nine breakups. So you better get used to rejection. You better get used to having problems because it's going to come your way. You can't live in this life and not have problems. But we're not puzzled. But we're, we're not utterly baffled either pursued but not caught or outrun, all right? God's there. I don't care where you go. You can move to another state. You can move to another country. You can go up into outer space. You can go into the depths of the sea. Guess what? God's there. You can't outrun God. God's there. Uh, struck down, but we're not out of the fight, all right? My, my dad was an amateur boxer besides being a pastor and a coal miner and and Ba a semi-pro baseball player. My dad was multi-talented, but he used to tell me this, son. Son, listen, the difference between the chump and the champ is when the chump gets knocked down, he doesn't get back up. The champ gets back up to his feet. He said, you'll have no idea how many fights I've seen in my life and guys that I fought with that got knocked down in the first round or the second round. They were really taking a pretty good beating, wasn't doing good. But they kept getting back up, and then they overcame them, and they wound up winning the fight. You can't win the fight if you aren't in the fight. You can't win the fight if you're a chump and you'll stay down when you get knocked down. you got to get back up. You're a champ. you got the you got the Word of God hid in your heart that you might not sin against the Lord. You have the Lord on your side and the Word of God to help you get through whatever problems you're facing today. The, uh, the first two things that he referred to here in the Scriptures were referred to as wrestling. The third was a race, and the fourth was a boxing match. I don't know. Sometimes I think he might have been a, a sports guy. If he was alive today, he might be a Cardinal fan for baseball and a Chiefs fan for football. But <laughs> he, he 
mentioned sports a lot. He mentioned races a lot. He mentioned wrestling a lot. And he tied this in. He wanted people to understand, take everyday life, things that you see, tie it into the Word of God to show you you can be an overcomer. You may be down, but you're not out of the fight. Why? Psalms 34, verse 18 and 19, it says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. What does the Lord do? The Lord is near the brokenhearted. When your heart's broken, when you're facing all sorts of problems, when you're having troubles in your life, you can live a real good life. But if you've got children and one of them gets in a problem or has trouble or loses their job or they uh, get burned out of college and they want to come home and wait a year or whatever, uh, all of a sudden their problem becomes your problem. All right? You can live right and do right, but other people's decisions can affect you. But you have to learn, I will get through this. I will not let this defeat me. Let's read that one more time. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. If you feel like you're crushed in spirit today, you feel like you can't get out of bed, you feel like you can't face the problems at work or whatever it may be, you can. Ask God to help you. Read the Word of God. Get your faith built up and then move forward and don't look back. Uh, and we need to realize in verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. What did that say? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Righteous people living right, doing right, doing what God wants them to do can still face afflictions. You say, oh, that's terrible. You know, well, you can claim uh, under your faith all you want that you're not going to have problems, but you're going to have them. All right? Everybody has them. You know, someday you're going to get the flu. Someday you might get a cold. Someday you might slip and fall and break a bone. You know, you don't have to be old to have problems, all right? I'm just telling you that you have to realize you need to deal with things, and many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of all of them. What did he say? He said he delivers out of all of them. He's not going to keep you from having trouble, but he'll be with you through the problem. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. I can walk through this. Keep walking. Keep moving. Don't stop and sit and lay down and say, I'm just going to stop here and die. You can't do that. You've got to get up and move. Uh, all right? Why do we draw, what do we draw from many of these afflictions from the righteous? All right? What do we draw from this? Afflictions can be pain, physical or mental. It can be distress. You can be in distress, all upset, got bad news. You feel like you're getting overwhelmed. You feel like that you're, Things are closed in on you. And that, that's a natural thing that happens to people. But you have to learn to resist the devil, and he will eventually flee from you. All right? Pain, it can be pain in your body. There are people who have a lot of pain in their body. You run into a lot of ball players, especially running backs and people in football, up, down, up, down, catchers. Up, down, up, down. Yadier Molina played 19 years of professional baseball not counting in the minor leagues and when he was in high school and all that, all the squatting up and down he did, all the games he played, as he gets older, his knees are going to give him trouble. That's part of life. You know, and people that lift a lot, they have back problems. It, it, it's part of life. Some things are just life. You need to face them and realize it's part of life. You know, eventually every one of us will need a new roof on our house. Does that mean that God's fell off the throne? Does that mean he's not sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father? No, it means my roof wore out and I need a new roof. Don't make more, more out of things than what they are. And so we need to realize that distress can come our way, pain in our body, pain mentally, grief at the time of loss, losing a loved one or losing a relationship with someone can bring you to a point where you're having a misery over the loss in your life. And at time of loss, misery will come your way. And all you have to do is realize that you're going to come under attack. And it can be mentally or physically, but God will deliver you out of them and give you the strength that you need to get through it. All right? You need to get strength to get through it. Uh, just like my Chiefs won a playoff game yesterday. So those guys, when they walked on the field, they felt like they'd been beat up 
hit a lot, they're sore, they're tired, they're going to hit the training room and get ready for the next game. I tell you what, you're going to face some bumps in life. You're going to have some aches and pains. As you get older, you're not going to see as good as you used to see. You know, I love these guys on TV that says, uh, God can heal you of anything and I'll pray for you and God will heal you and that you, you shouldn't be sick and all that. And they're reading their Bible with their eyeglasses on. All right. Well, uh, that tells me that uh, you're not exactly practicing what you preach. If you want me to be 10 foot tall and bulletproof and be able to loop through everything, survive everything and not be sick and not ever be have any problems, then maybe you ought not to be wearing eyeglasses, all right? Or a preacher that says he's got a pacemaker in his heart, but yet he believes that God heals everybody, nobody should ever get sick. Uh, it, it just doesn't work that way. Folks, God gave you a head, not to put a hat on, but to think with. Think about things and don't let people give you a bill of goods that you shouldn't be buying. In life, we will have troubles and we will face afflictions. But God's there with us through them. You have to learn to work through problems, all right? That's just the way it is in life. We can draw, uh, draw courage and wisdom and strength from God and his word and help make it through whatever affliction you're facing today. I don't know what you're facing today. I don't know how many people look at this video over the next few months. But if you're facing sickness, pain in your body, mental anguish, grief, loss, breakup, loss of job, whatever it may be. God can help you get past it and get through it and move on. We need to admit that we need God's help. We need God's power so we can get past our problems and go on through it and go on to something else and be, and be happy in our life. You can be happy in your life. Someday you will smile again. Someday you will find somebody again. Someday you will have a day without pain. Someday things will get better. You have to believe that. You have to receive it and you have to move forward. If I'm going to sit here and tell you as a minister who's been in a church all of his life, and I've preached a lot of years, that you're never going to get sick or you're never going to have an ache and pain, you shouldn't have anything, I'd be lying to you. You're going to have problems, all right? Like I said, you can live a perfect life, but if your kids mess up, you got a problem. If your spouse gets lose their job, it's not your fault, but yet it becomes your problem. You see what I mean? There's a ripple effect. So trouble will come your way, but you can get through them all through Christ Jesus. Uh, now I'm going to tell you something you may not want to hear. I don't think many ministers will tell you, but some of your problems may pass like a kidney stone. I mean, they're not all good. They're not all not painful. It can be painful. It can be like passing a kidney stone, but this too shall pass. And then the pain is gone and you move on to another day. God will help you get through your problems. He wouldn't have put in the word of God, many are the afflictions of the righteous, if you wasn't going to face afflictions. And they can be mentally or physically, doesn't matter, your heart, your liver, your lungs, or organs in your body. Your brain is an organ in the body. So it doesn't matter which one gets attacked. It's still attacked. You're still facing sickness. We must get rid past these things. What God allows us to do is to help, seek his help to get past our afflictions and our problems in life. Psalm 66 and 10 says, For thou have tr tried us, O God, and you have refined us like silver is refined. Just as fire refines silver in the smelting process and the problems we go through in life, we go through these problems, they build us character and refine us and get more impurities out of our life because we're going through the fire. All right, you're going to be molded. Jesus is the potter, you're the clay. He's going to have to fix a crack now and then. He's going to have to get an impurity out of there once in a while. Well, how do you do that? You get some water, you put it back on the wheel, and you go to work. Sometimes we need to put it back on the wheel and let God retool us and, and help us out. Uh, this, the Bible can bring us into newer and deeper wisdom that we've never had before, helping us discern the difference from truth and from falsehood. All right? 
Because there's a lot of preachers out there preaching falsehood. They want you to think that they, I heard a preacher the other day, he said, I've never sinned in 18 years. I've never had an impure thought. I've never thought about another woman. Even when I see women that are not dressed like they should be, I have no problem there. I haven't, I haven't had one day sick and all this. And they go on, now, they're lying to you. I mean, everybody has something in life, or the Lord wouldn't say many, not a few, not just one. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. We're going to face multiple problems in our life. You have to work past them. You have to be a problem solver. You have to sometimes regroup, but you can push forward and make it with the Word of God through prayer and reading the Bible. God will help you. You may have to seek out a doctor. I know a lot of preachers don't believe in that, but I'd rather you seek out a doctor than die. I'd rather you seek out a doctor than put a gun in your mouth and pull the trigger. I'd rather you see the doctor when you're suffering so bad you can't go to work. That's what physicians are here for. You can pray and ask God to help you uh, to find the right uh, physician to help you get through your problem. And that doesn't mean you don't ask him to heal you. Sure you do. And you go on to it. But if you've got high blood pressure it's affecting your heart and going to weaken your heart, you need to take some blood pressure medicine and listen to the doctor. But God will bring you through these things. But God's not going to come down and make every decision in your life for you. You're a free moral agent. You have to make some decisions on your own. Life is a gift from God, and we should appreciate it every day that we live. That we still are alive, even though we're facing problems, struggles, and trials, we're still alive. We're still here. I'm still going to have a better day. It may be tomorrow, it might be the next day, but I am going to get better. Why? Because many of the afflictions of the righteous, and I may be knocked down, but I'm not out. I'm not the chump. I'm the champ. I'm getting back up. We're going to go round two. I'm not going to lay down and just accept defeat and be kicked and stomped on. I'm going to get back up and start swinging. I'm talking metaphorically. I'm talking about figure of speech, and I'm talking to you about going out and fighting with people, all right? So let's, let's cover that real quick. I'm telling you that you need to resist the devil. The Bible says if you resist him, He'll flee from you. And let's just read that verse one more time, and I'm going to close. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not dis despairing, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. You are not defeated. Just because you lose a battle doesn't mean you're going to lose the war. Just because you get knocked down in a fight with the devil doesn't mean that when you get back up, you can't win the fight. You can through Christ Jesus. The Lord loves you. He wants you to have a good life. God wants you to prosper. And not when, when you break that down, look at we're not talking about money all the time. I know a lot of people think prospering is having the best car, the best home, lots of money. No, you can prosper spiritually having grandchildren and great-grandchildren or whatever, having nieces and nephews that you love. These are things money can't buy. You know, your children. God's good to us all. But we need to realize that in life you're going to face some things, but you can overcome them through Christ Jesus. I love you. The Lord loves you. Please hit the subscribe button for me and hit the bell so you get a notice when I put a video up. And if you click like, it would really help me push the channel out. Now let me say what I always say at the end of every video. Thank you for your time, this time, till next time. Randy says so long. Love you, God bless you, have a wonderful day.